Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over how to disassemble a saxophone for the beginning technician. If you are a professional technician, you might see a couple of techniques that you haven't seen before. If you are a new person to the trade, we welcome you. And we also have a hashtag for today that's going to be... It's going to be saxophone repair. Put that in, in the comments below. That's going to enter you into a drawing for next week for 15% off any of the courses that are coming up in the new year. We have a bunch of them. We also have a day, uh, sorry, a, per, uh, a saxophone basics done right course on February 20th. And that's going to be a course that's going to go over a lot of basic techniques like disassembling and reassembling a saxophone along with everything else in between and getting into some more intermediate and advanced techniques. We have a winner for this week. It's going to be, oh, we got the... Uh, Username, ready? Here we go. Uh, Vblessed44. Uh, congratulations, sir or ma'am or they. Person. Person. Citizen. Congratulations. Uh, citizen. Congratulations to you. Send me an email to rich, R I C H, at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount code. And for those of you who want to get into the drawing, uh, this is hashtag saxophone repair. Put that in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and try to subscribe because I think that really helps the channel and helps get the word spread and, and that's good stuff. And the click, bell. Click the bell so you get alerts when we go live either early or late or even on time. It'll that's let true. You know. That's true. We had to put our saxophone back together for today, so we are starting a little later than usual. Uh, we have some courses that just ended. You did an advanced course we also had an engraving great. course we had people from all over the u.s come and it's a great take, time. take the engraving course that was really cool uh some professional technicians some amateur technicians it was a good mix of people and i really liked it it was, it was good. good uh ryan you're gonna be doing a meet and greet in yes. greensboro north carolina on november well november 12th saturday yes. saturday good day that's right it's a very good day, good day. Nice. Nice. Area, yes. Uh, Napper Regional Clinic. Oh, okay. Very good. And so what is your clinic going to be on? Engraving. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're doing I'm a, a one-trick pony. I'm a one Well, two-trick. It's saxophones and engraving. So, uh, Ryan, Well, three. It's, it's jokes as well. But a that's couple really of jokes. Cool. Yeah, good. Very good. So Ryan's going to be there on November 12th. And if you are not a Napper member, uh, you don't have to be a Napper member to attend the regional clinics that they have. You can just go to napper.org and sign up there and you can have a meet and greet with Ryan. Yes. Other clinicians as well. It's going to be a great, great lineup. Of, oh, of good. Clinicians. Very good. And there's more information on who's going to be there and what the topics are on napper.org. Uh, check the calendar of the events. That's where that information is. This is a viewer requested video, the one that we're going to do. We had a couple of requests for these kind of more uh, basic or kind of beginner level uh, repair techniques. So if you want to see some other techniques that of whether advanced or basic or whatever you think they are, whatever you are curious about, feel free to put them in the comments too. Uh, we try to get to those and this is one that someone I think asked over the summer and here we are doing it. Uh, so Ryan, let's get into the tools for this job. Yeah. What do we got? It's not a lot. Not a lot of tools. Uh, as you can see here, the first thing if you're going to be disassembling your saxophone is, well, obviously you need a saxophone. Uh, that's probably the most True. important. Uh, and then we have a spring hook, and we have a couple variety of screwdrivers, depending on the shaft length and tip width, and then also a pair of pliers. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, those of you that have these, these are really handy. These are rod blocks, so this is one for keeping the uh, rods organized and this is for keeping the pivot screws organized so but we're going to show you we're going to go over two different ways uh, ones that you do use the rod block other ones that if you don't have them you can still disassemble your saxophone and keep everything kind of organized uh, and for you older guys myself included just in case you need a little bit of extra help the, the magnifier is always very very handy so very, there we go. Okay, very good. We've got assorted screwdrivers. We've got a spring hook. We've got a pair of pliers that hopefully we're going to see. Uh, where do we start? Uh, where do we start and where, how do we assess where we're going to get started? Uh, the first thing is you know, you're going to have to realize that in order to take some keys off, that there are going to be other keys stacked on top of it. So I can't take these bottom ones off until I take the top ones off. Okay, It's, it's like that over here. Uh, but really, I like to start with either the palm keys or the, the left-hand table. You can see right here how they kind of rest on the table. So what I like to do is I like to take these guys off first. That way then I can lay the saxophone nice and flat without worrying about bending 
keys or, you know, putting dents into the body. So I will most likely start with these palm keys here and then move to my left hand table, taking the bell keys off. Okay. So that's usually where I'll start. Okay, are we going to start right now? I guess so. Now's okay. The time. Here we go. And time to begin. All right, here we go. I'm yes. writing it down. So, real important that you pick a screwdriver with a, a tip that is not too big, not too wide, and, and you know, the angle, hopefully, um, you know, the tip goes into the actual slot of the rod itself. So, you don't want to be grabbing any old screwdriver out no, of a drawer. Definitely not. Definitely not. Right. So okay. there we are. It's simple. There, that's it. I took the key off. Video's over. Mm. Uh, so I have the key, and then I have the rod that came out. Now we're going to go over a couple things, and I think you coined the term. What was it? Uh, screw. Screw keeping track of uh, management. That's right. Screw, screw keeping track of management, or as I like to say, which is much easier, organization. Uh, so, uh, you can do it a couple different yeah, ways. It's much better. It's much better. Yeah. Although I like yours. I like it. It's, it's You go with, uh, above and beyond the 17 pieces of flair. Um, so I took my rod out. You can, if you have one of these handy dandy rod blocks, you can go ahead and put it in to wherever it goes. I just took the palm D off, so that's why I am putting that into the palm D. Um, one of my extra tips and should we go to the Ryan cam? Yeah, go ahead. For the extra tip. Sure. Ryan cam. Here we go. Ryan cam. So, folks, what I do is when I put the rod into the actual rod block, I make sure that the threads are pointing up. Because okay? a lot of times you'll have a little bit of an area there. The shoulder, if you put them in with the threads facing down, this gets bumped. A lot of times you can bend that. So be very careful. Put your rods with the thread side facing up. All right, back to normal. I think that worked out very well. The, the Ryan cam is something new. I, I think it's good. To, I think we're it's good. We're trying to get it going. I'm trying to make it happen. Yeah. I'm trying to make it happen. So, um, if you don't have a rod block, it's very, very easy to keep track of your rods and your screws. But as soon as I take the key off, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. So you got a couple. So. You got a couple different ways. You can either put it exactly. in the rod block or you can put it back in the instrument. Yeah. Big thing is you keep things organized so you don't lose your rods and your screws. Another story, and I'll do this as I'm taking this part. I don't think we need to go to the Ryan cam on this one, although okay. I, I reserve the right to go to the Ryan cam. Um, one time I was helping my brother do some painting and we were taking switch plates off and I said to him, Garrett, make sure that when you take that switch plate off, you put that little screw back in the, back in the, you know, the, the, the outlet. Thing. Yeah, back in the outlet so you don't lose it. Ah, no, whatever. Sure enough, he lost some screws. So actually, Ryan cam. <laughs> Garrett, I told you, you would lose some screws and you did, so that's right. Okay, back to regular. I hope he watches that. Oh, he'll probably watch the Facebook one. So, but yeah, so just kind of keeping organized. So as soon as I take off the rod, I put it directly back in to the post. And we had, I think somebody asked in our Facebook feed, is it okay to take that rod and put it in the key? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There's cool. nothing wrong with that. That's good the only too. thing I can think that might happen is if you pick the key up and the rod falls out. That's the only mm. thing. But either way, so that you make sure that you keep things completely organized. Yes. So I'll just put them right back in. A lot of times I'm using a rod block uh, for the pivot screws. I will either, if I'm doing complete refinishing, use this. Or a lot of times just put them directly back in. Right? So I've removed my palm keys. I'm going to kind of put those off to the side here. Get all my tools out of the way. Now, you notice now I've taken those off, but I still have this left-hand table that if I lay it flat on the bench, we get a little bit of wobble. It's pressing on that. So I want to remove this next. The palm keys had flat springs. We didn't need to worry about using our spring hook for those. Okay, now that we're getting into keys that have needle springs, um, I'm going to have to, before I take the key off, use my spring hook and just release that spring tension. You can do it a number of ways. Um, I will tend to either go in and remove all the strings first and then start taking my keys off. I'll do it individually one at a time. Um, so I just released the spring for my G-sharp lever. And well, what, as soon as you remove the rod, I'm going to put it directly back in. Now, uh, Ryan, just for, while you're working on disassembling that sure. left-hand table, uh, I know that there's a couple different sizes of spring hooks mm -hmm. uh, that are on the market. I know we have a large and small. Does it matter spring hook size when you're working on saxophone? Um, not so much. I will tend to use the large ones because I have a lot more access. You know, there are accessibility spaces in here on the saxophone. I can reach the larger one. Okay. Uh, I can say that if you're working on maybe flute or clarinet, you might want to use the small one. Uh, okay. You can see there's my spring hook here and the, the extra little thing that I did 
uh, a little bonus tip is I just gave it a little bit of a bend. Um, and that's what I use. So I can either push the spring or I can pull it. Uh, my other side I have just filed down a little bit smaller and it's just a little hook. So, uh, but size doesn't really matter when it comes to spring hooks. We only make the, the, the large and the small. No medium. I just noticed weird. that. Yeah, weird. no medium. No medium. Just uh, spring. all or nothing. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Hmm. Um, another thing that I'll mention when I am, you know, using my screwdriver is, even though this is not necessarily a razor sharp tip, it is very sharp. Um, so stabbing myself is no fun whatsoever. So anytime I'm trying to screw in a, a rod or, or, or a pivot screw, is I will try to keep my hand on this side of the blade. So I don't really want to grab it like this because there's a lot of times where you put a lot of pressure and all of a sudden it slips and now you've stabbed yourself in the hand. And that's no fun. So when I am usually using my screwdriver, I will have my hand on this side to guide it. Sometimes I will do this so I can get it in, in the slot a little bit easier and then I will usually switch to this side so I get my hand completely out of the way because if you've ever stabbed yourself with a screwdriver, you know it's no fun. Yes. No fun. And while you're removing a couple more springs on the C sharp key there, uh, what about screwdriver slot size in terms of fitting into a pivot screw or fitting into a rod? You don't um, you don't want to pick something that's too big or too wide. Okay. Okay. You know you can see the different tip widths we have here. Um, you know I like to use one that's a little undersized. That way, if if I accidentally hit, or well, hopefully I won't accidentally hit the posts. Uh, because this steel is going to win every time. So you, you see it a lot where it's been scraped away from somebody using a screwdriver tip that is mm. maybe just a little too big. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and take my C-sharp lever off. And you can see now I've got my entire left-hand cable removed so that now I can lay the instrument down and I'm not worrying about any kind of pressure point bending any keys. So now we can start on our stacks. Okay, really, to, in order to get my top stack off, which is this series of keys right here, you can see I have some of these keys that are over top. So I have to remove these first in order to get to the ones underneath. Just go ahead and release some springs. One thing I will say is sometimes you can get away with the pivot screw loosening just one side and being able to take the key off. If you do that and you're having trouble, don't force it. Just go ahead and go to the other side and loosen your pivot screw. You may even need to take it all the way out. But again, I just back them right back in. Okay? You can use your rod block or your, your screw block, um, your screw board. But as soon as I take that out, I'll just put them right back in. Okay. Now, what happens if you have a stuck screw or stuck rod when you're um, trying to take that off? You got to be real careful with those because that's again, if you're holding it like this and you're trying to work on something, you're, there's a lot of force, a lot of pressure, and that's when you end up stabbing yourself. Um, you can watch our previous video that we've done on yeah, a link yes. where we talked about removing stuck rods and stuck screws. We gave you some tips, tricks, and techniques for that. Like, share, and subscribe. Yes. Oh, and we got hashtag saxophone repair. Oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry, I got to highlight it. Yeah, saxophone <laughs> repair. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag. This, uh, this one up here. Cradle cool. the baby Let's, saxophone repair, right? Oh my right God. There. Cradle the baby. Cradle the baby. So. All right. Thank you, Ryan. I, and I will put a link to the uh, stuck rod how to fix video uh, blog. I think we, we did, it was a live stream. It is. Um, it was a live that. stream. Stuck rod video. I'm just making a note. Um, okay. So we have a stuck rod, and now you're kind of creating paths toward our left hand table is that right or uh, top stack top stack top stack yes yeah so now i've removed these keys you can see i have now clear access to my top stack uh again i'm just going to start by undoing all of my springs make it makes it much much easier to actually remove the key you know here i am breaking my own rule but you notice i'm pinching my pinch technique so you're all well you're also not using a lot of pressure towards the instrument there yeah so you can see i've removed my top stack rod there we are i can remove my keys now and again same thing if you have a rod block i'm going to put that in my rod block label top stack there you can see again threads are facing up or if you don't have one of those you can put it directly in the saxophone but before I do that, you'll notice I have still one key attached. This is my bis key. 
This is usually our most modern horn separate from the actual top stack. Some it goes underneath, some of them they go over top. This one actually goes underneath. So if I put this rod in all the way, it's gonna block me from moving that key. So before I put this rod back into the post so I don't lose it, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this bis key. Now, Ryan, while you're taking that key off, I have another question for you. Um, yes, go ahead. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realize you were waiting for that. Yeah, I was yeah, waiting for that. Uh, Please, go on. The, uh, the, in terms of when you're taking the keys off, like you just took off the top stack there, are you going to try to arrange them in any way? I know a lot of professional technicians might just kind of pile them up. I've seen you guys do that a lot in the yeah, shop. That's, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay. Thanks for calling me out. <laughs> is, well, what about, so this is a kind of geared toward more of the kind of beginning technician. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend for them? Can they pile it up or I would they definitely, organize yes, them? Especially for the beginning tech, if you're not familiar with the anatomy of the saxophone quite yet, first off, you will. Um, but for right now, I would try to keep everything trying to get kind of together. So my palm keys I took off, I would keep them over here. My left-hand table, I would keep them over here. Top stack, I would usually keep them kind of in order right over here. That way it's not, well, what key is this? Uh, I don't know. Um, I will tell you now another story, story time. Okay. I don't think we need the Ryan cam, although maybe at the end, who knows, be prepared. All right. Um, so the, the story was I'm, uh, this weekend, I'm taking off my, uh, or, or trying to repair my, my riding tractor. I got a tractor. Yeah. Multifaceted saxophone repair. Well, you engraving repair guys. Tractor. Holy cow. Okay. So, uh, so I was trying to repair my tractor, realized it was a belt that slipped off. Mm. So I'm in there taking off pulley so I get a little enough tension to put it on. Um, get everything back on. And I realized, oh, which way does this go? Does the pulley go over this way? Does it zig or does it zag? I don't know. So had I had just taken a picture, which leads uh. me to my tip. Which is, if you're not sure, before you take things apart, you can just take, everybody has a camera on their phone, mm -hmm. take a little picture, okay? So that way you can, if you're not sure when you go to put it back together, you can refer to that picture. Had I had taken a picture of my tractor, uh, actually Ryan came on this, had I had taken a picture, it would have been much easier, much less heavy. I don't know why I'm speaking softer, but back to regular. Regular! <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, see, no, that was a test. Uh... You almost passed. Um, so yeah, funny. so take a picture if you're not sure when you're taking things apart, uh, and it makes it much, much easier. So, okay. Where are we now? So now we're getting into the bottom stack here and you can notice that now I've taken off my left hand table. I can take off my bottom stack. Okay. And again, same thing here where I'm just going to undo my springs, makes it much, much easier to remove the keys. And again, this one is going to be a rod. Oh, shout out to Nicolay. He's saying he's been looking for a clear and detailed well, You've uh, come to the right place. He'd probably like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you take that hashtag. Put it in the it, comments it, below. Oh, it's, it's not here. Sorry. Uh, it's, where'd it go? It went somewhere. No, it's not on the right. I'll tell mm. you that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've got our keys going around. So again, if you're going, if you're unsure. Oh, I think if I go here, there oh, it is. There it is. There, there it is. is. Sorry. So cradle, cradle the baby. baby. <laughs> cradle the baby. So, uh, but you can see here if I'm taking these off and I'm not sure of the order in which they go as I take them off, I will actually lay them out. So that's our bottom like stack. So. so there's your bottom stack. Cool. Your F sharp, F, E, and D. There you go. So now we can continue on uh, again with the rod. I'm just going to put that right back in. Now, a lot of people or technicians will use these rod blocks that you have displayed there when they're going to clean the instrument. Yes. So, or if they're going to put in a spring or yep. do some sort of dent work and you don't want the rods there, uh, the rod block is a good safe. Absolutely. And organizationally uh, sound, sound yes. way. Yes, yes. It's, yeah. good. it's good technique. Hashtag saxophone repair. Hashtag cradle the baby. <laughs> uh, Tony puts that in. They gotta win. They oh, gotta that's win. Funny. automatic winner. Whoops, uh, sorry. Uh, cradle the baby. Cradle the baby. Funny. Cradle the baby. So yeah, we're taking keys off again. We could use our rod block. As soon as I take the key off, I'll put it back in. And usually, what I'll do is I'll just give it a finger tighten. There you go. Thank you. Saxophone mm -hmm. repair. Hashtag out of the way. Uh, so just give that a finger tighten. You don't need to really screw it in. 
all the way. So you can see now we've got our top stack off, we've got our bottom stack, we've got our bell keys, we've got our palm keys. Now you can move to these kind of what I call independent keys. So we have here our C and our E flat, which are kind of together, but they're separate really from everything else. So I can go ahead and remove those. So unhook my springs, get a screwdriver with the appropriate size tip, take that key off, and as soon as it comes out, it goes right back in. Don't be a Garrett. I'm kidding. You can be a Garrett. It's okay. Uh, it's a good thing he doesn't watch the YouTube one. Yes. So he only watches the Facebook he would be, one. He would be upset. So, all right. So we've got a lot of our keys off here. We're now moving to some side keys here. Uh, most modern saxophones have the side C and the side B flat. The pad cup is actually separate from the lever. So you have to remove them in two parts. And here's a tip. We don't have to go to the Ryan camp, but here's a tip. Uh, he was ready, though. He was ready. Saw, you saw his fingers right there. He was ready to move to the Ryan cam. Um, I would suggest taking off the pad cup first. That way it makes the uh, taking off the lever much, much easier. So okay. here I will, again, these are typically the same size as our palm key, so I'm going to use the same size screwdriver okay. on that guy right this there. The smaller, the smaller, smaller tip screwdriver. Smaller tip screwdriver. I think that's a size E if you were at Music Medic looking at screwdrivers. And I also am looking forward to when we have our own. Um, oh, we're coming out. Own, we're working on it, folks. Yeah, Don't coming get out. Excited. Don't get worked. We are working on some custom screwdrivers. That is that is a little. It's, it's, we're working. We're thinking about it. We're thinking. Yeah, we're thinking yeah. about thinking about it. I think we're thinking about thinking about it. Uh, so I see so, you got a pair of pliers there. I What's got a going pair on? of pliers here. So this is where sometimes maybe the rod is a little short. Maybe it's tough to reach. Maybe your fingers are tired from, you know, doing whatever. Um, and you need to grab this pair of pliers. You'll notice what I'm using here is a pair of duckbill Nipex. Um, these are parallel pliers. So my preferred pair of pliers to take out rods would be parallel pliers, action like this, versus traditional style or, you know, scissor action where they're like this. Uh, with the parallel style action pliers, I get much better grip on the actual rod itself. Uh, another thing is placement, where you actually grab on the rod with your pliers. So we have that screwdriver slot which is down here like this, the tip of the blade of the, the screwdriver goes in. What you don't want to do is you don't want to grab it like this, so you pinch that sh that slot shut, mm. okay? So anytime you grab it, you're not going to grab it like this, you're going to grab it like this. That way you don't worry about pinching that screwdriver slot shut. And another thing I will say, and we are going to go to the Ryan camp for this, is, folks, don't ever, don't ever let me catch you using serrated jaw pliers on saxophone rods or saxophones or anything. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get a little firm there, folks. Well, I, I, I've, I've seen it happen. Yeah, it's, Grand, it's Grandpa uses good. his, you know, fishing pliers on. Yeah, no, no linesman pliers, none of yeah. those, no serrated jaws, no plumbing pliers. True. Okay, so again, take the rod out. As soon as I take it out, I'm just going to put it right back in so I don't mix them up. Speaking of mix up, another story time. We don't need to go to the Ryan camp, although if you want to. <laughs> um, one time working at a, a different place, not here at Music Medic, I was swamped with repairs. And one of the guys working at the counter, the music store I was working at, offered to help, um, which was very nice of him. He, I said, well, if you could just take the keys off this clarinet, I got to do an overhaul on it. That would, that would be great. That would help me out. So uh, I come out later to see how he's doing. I see a big pile of keys. No, no big deal. And then I see another little smaller pile of rods and screws. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Just did not save me time. Mm -hmm. So very important. Rod management serial what was your uh, pending? oh gosh i don't even remember if you can put that in the comments below <laughs> you also you will also enter to be uh winning 15 percent right. off of any of the courses that are coming up in 2023 including the february 20th uh, saxophone basics done right course that's going to feature techniques like this and i, I believe it's um Screw organizational management, management technique, yeah, technique. or yeah, screw rod, screw rod. screw keeping track of uh, management. That's it. That's yes. it. So if you can write technique. that in the comments. <laughs> uh, so either way, keep track of your stuff. So now that we removed the pad cup, now I can go ahead and remove the actual lever itself. I'm going to undo the spring, which I just did off camera. Oh, oh I can't see anything. With oh, your oh, 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 here we go. Let's get that in. So again. I, I, because I, I noticed you're using the, the longer 
shafted yes. uh, screwdriver yes. for this, this job. Is so much easier getting your hand out of the way. I, I mean, I could use one that has a shorter shaft, but you can see now my hand is kind of bumping around keys. So I like to use the ones that have a little bit longer of a shaft for better reach. So again, here I'm going to take one out and I'm going to loosen the other one. That way it makes it a little bit easier for me to take my lever off. And there we go. I mean, everything else is pretty much okay. self-explanatory, just making sure you're keeping things organized. As soon as you take the rod out or the pivot screw out, you take the key off, put it right back in. Right? right. Hashtag saxophone repair. It's on another screen. It's not the Ryan cam, but it's this one. Oh, there uh, it is. And shout out to uh, all of you who have commented. I've been watching the feed. Thank you so much for your comments. Make sure you put that hashtag in the comments below, like, share, and subscribe so we can enter you into the drawing. We've got more drawings and we've got more prizes coming up. It's going to be uh, a good old time. Next week, we're going to be back with Ryan and we're going to do a little more of an advanced technique. We're going to be showing you how to make your own pivot reamer. We are in the process of making some pivot reamers. The production crew is starting to think about it, which means we might have them before the end of the year. It's very exciting it's for saxophone. And I think clarinet... And Eventually. clarinet and flute will be after that. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. We are going to get out of here. If you have any questions or if you want to see other types of videos in the future, especially this kind of more basic stuff uh, where we take a little more time but still keep things clear, leave us a comment, leave us a like. We really appreciate it, and we will see you guys next time. Happy repairing. This is where we have to pause motionless for five seconds. Do not move. <laughs>